Can you have too much of a good thing? Well, yes. Okay, see you tomorrow. Oh, 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 sorry. You want more? Ah, oh, I see, that's the plan. You want me to explain what it means? Okay, I will. Of course, it's gonna take five minutes, but you know the score. Okay, so we're talking about complacency. Now, too much of a good thing means when you're ruling the roost and you've uh, you've been doing it for a while and you think everything's rosy and you just stick there. You just stick with the same old formula thinking that's going to work forever. Oh no, it won't. There are many instances, many examples of things that just don't exist anymore. Um, the British car industry, for example, uh, I mean, being English, very proud to have Rolls-Royce and Bentley and things like that. Rolls-Royce is owned by BMW, the Germans. Bentley is now owned by Volkswagen, the Germans. We complacently thought we have the best cars in the world. We just kept churning them out exactly the way as we've always done. However, they didn't inject enough technology, didn't modernise, they just sat on their laurels. Look what happened. Of course, they're still manufacturing in the UK, so it's not a bad thing. So, there you go. By the way, you might hear some cars driving past. I'm in the lovely Surrey, South Surrey, in Van Greater Vancouver in Canada. Behind me, these are blueberry fields. These are what blueberry fields look like in March. Later in the year, they'll look much better. I have lots of blueberries and lots of people picking them. But there is a road the other side, so sorry about the sound. Anyway, back to complacency. So what can we do about it? Let me give you a better example, more um, akin to my heart, which is my company, Fire Protection Online. When I launched it and dived in online and learnt all the best practices and did stuff, we quickly ranked top for pretty much any keywords we wanted. We did very well. Um, Google AdWords, killing it. At, at the top, had it perfectly optimised. And it wasn't actually complacent, but let me tell you what happens, is when you are top, you are the example that everyone else wants to copy and wants to beat, not just copy. So, uh, any web designer, any potential e-commerce company just simply looked at what we're doing and just said, I want that, I want something like that, I want it laid out like that, I want that format. So they were able to cherry pick every good thing that we did and then add some new tech and some new ideas. From, from our point of view, our perspective, we weren't complacent, but from inside, it's difficult to see what's possible. So perhaps we should have brought in some outside guidance on design uh, and, and so on, and done some more conversion testing. Now we are still the top one, but others are catching up. Ooh, it's not nice. But in fact, funny enough, people, some people just copy, clone the whole website and then didn't realize Google would still index that in the background. Um, we do use special software to track for people copying our copy. And they would still leave in parts that would say, and here at Fire Protection Online, until they gradually edited it out and replaced it. It's not very nice to see, but that's what happens. So how can complacency get in? I mean, the most common one is on adverts. If you've got a winning advert, thinking that that will win forever. But once your target market has seen that advert a few times, they become blind to it. Um, one in paid advertising, one of the things is to always try and beat your control, always split test. AdWords and, and Bing, Bing's equivalent, uh, Bing being Microsoft, have an inbuilt split testing thing. Facebook has split testing. Those ads, once you've seen them, you just note, don't notice them anymore. They have to be changed up, so you keep that going. If you have brochures, you have a successful catalogue that won, that's, that's winning. Of course, you can keep layout things, but change the design so people know this is new, it's fresh. Put dates on, put, uh, we've just launched a, a little mini catalogue, and we put the date start, that says, a, um, it be going out in April, it will say April 2015. People will know when that is produced. When we uh, send out a new one in three months' time, it will have that date of what's that? June, July uh, 2015. People will know, and it will have different colours, it will have a different heading. There are um, other things that you can have. There are, but just 
if you've if you've been somewhere advertising for a long time or doing something, take a breather. Just step away. Perhaps you've got the same type of emails. Stop for a while. Just take a breather. Don't do them. And then, that's a cement truck, by the way. A bit low, wasn't it? So then, come back refreshed. People will notice you again. Now, of course, you can announce that you are taking a breather. You can, in your emails, you can say, people may be tired. We're going to research a new, you know, etc. Just mix it up. It will improve your longevity and will stop people being able to catch up because if you keep changing and keep evolving, it will be harder for people to copy. You get me. It will work. Don't worry. Don't be scared. Try this stuff. Trust me. It works. Okay. Today is time for a podcast. You know I love podcasts. The marketingforowners.com slash podcast shows all the videos, shows all the things. You can subscribe though on iTunes. I'd love you to subscribe so this gets downloaded automatically every day to your iPhone or whatever. It's dead easy. Even I can do it. And then give a review. That would be nice. I'd love to know what you think. If you like it, just, just go in and just say, oh, I like that. Nice for me to know. And for everyone else. But today we're going to recommend Social Media Marketing Happy Hour. Bit of a mouthful, and it's not even an hour. It's from Dawn Mars Ortiz and Tracy Reuter. Now, it's a daily, uh, my, my podcast is daily on work, on the working week, Monday to Friday. Theirs runs over the weekend. They're up to 200 odd episodes, they've been doing it a while. It lasts about eight, nine, 10 minutes and they specifically concentrate on the latest things that are working for them in social media. I like it, they have fun, they seem to work well together. It's fun, it's, it's nice, it's gonna liven up your day. Like I say, it's only 10 minutes. Subscribe to that on iTunes, I recommend it. If you want the links, the links will be in the show notes, that's marketingforowners.com slash podcast, as they always are. I'll see you tomorrow.